I can't believe. Why would I do that? I get so stupid. I broke my system. <laughs> I don't give a damn. It's your boy, Nick Moses 05. What's going on, everybody? Y'all know I'm tripping, man. Let me get myself two shotgun shots. I'll be bugging. I'll be bugging sometimes. But anyways, yes, you see the title of the video, man. Why did I do this? Why did I do this? A lot of people want to know. So first, what is the dumbest damn console hack ever? I'm going to jump right into it directly from an article from Kotaku. I'm not sure. Is that how you pronounce it? Y'all got me pronouncing this wrong. I'm going to be mad at y'all. Y'all put in the comments right now. What is it? Kotaku? You know what I'm saying? It could be something else. I'm sitting there pronouncing it. Nobody's even going to correct me, okay? But I want to talk about this article because this article, I think, was derived from Modern Vintage Gamer. Yo, drop a bomb for my man, Modern Vintage Gamer. You've been doing the damn thing. Yo, I'm the fastest growing podcast, and I'm about to be catching up to you, sir. I want the smoke. No, I'm joking, Modern Vintage. I don't want the smoke from you, man. I'm cool. I'm cool with that. But anyways, Modern Vintage Gamer, shout out to you, man. It seems like... You came out with a video, and next thing you know, this article gets posted, and it reminded me of everything I went through back in them days. So I'm going to go ahead and read through it real quick and tell you about my dumbass truth, okay? When Microsoft released the Xbox 360, it was designed to be unhackable. I hate those terms, by the way, unhackable, okay? It's undetectable until it's detected. It's unhackable until it's hacked. You know what I mean? I, I don't like those terms. But anyways, security-wise, the machine was a step up from the original Xbox with custom hardware and encryption keys to keep hackers and modders at bay. And of course, they figured out an end. Now, I will say that the original Xbox, come on, Microsoft, y'all. I mean, I could have stared at the damn system for five minutes and had full access to everything. Like, that's how easy it was. My little daughter could have walked in and said, Daddy, it's just a controller through a memory card in, and she could have pulled up every hack and through West Coast Rider videos, all that on there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was bad. This was probably, I don't know if it's worse than Dreamcast. Dreamcast didn't have no copyright protection. People were just literally using uh, image burn and just burning out a disc and putting it in a Dreamcast, and it worked. So, you know, there was a lot of different mods, and I've been around the block. But this one is the dumbest one. So let's talk more. Let's talk more, okay? The reason it's so dumb, and as they say here, it uses a drill. Now, how many people would want to drill into their systems? Dumb. I know. My dumb ass did it not once, but, uh, excuse me, twice. So I'm dumb as hell, right? So let's go ahead and talk about it. The original Xbox and its rival, the PlayStation 2, could be modded by soldering chips directly to the circuit board and by adding these chips copyright measures were removed. It was then possible to run bootleg disk explained by BBC back in 2005 in an article detailing Microsoft's plans for a then new unhackable machine. Now this is directly from the BBC article in 2005. We've taken security to the hardware level and built it from the ground up. Chris Satchel, I remember actually watching Chris Satchel's video talking about the Xbox security, and man, that shit was in depth. They were talking about E-Fuses. I never heard about E-Fuses until then. And they were showing all the vulnerabilities of the Xbox and how they all were patched. So they did a great job, and still to this day, great security, right? So, we've taken security to the hardware level and built it in from the ground up. That is true. The reason I'm going to say is because the first Xbox was a piece of shit the way it was protected. There are going to be levels of security in this box that the hacker community has never seen before, but Microsoft was very naive and the exploits were inevitable. As I say, undetectable and hackable. Don't, don't even use those terms. Say very secure, okay? But by the way we have done the design doesn't mean that it will work on somebody else's machine. So they're saying what? Ever is done for one machine that might work as a mod won't work on their machine okay reason being is because xbox 360 got smart dvd drive and the motherboard was married so you couldn't even repair your own shit gave myself three and microsoft couple slaps for you that was bogus you should let people repair their own stuff okay i got a nintendo switch guess what the sd card reader was screwing up guess what i did bought a repair part plugged it right in no problem. Shout out. You know what? And I don't even give Nintendo a lot of kudos like that. But shout out to you, Nintendo. I'm going to give you two Mario jumps. No, you get three. Your game. Your game. I'll give you three. So, in a recent video, YouTuber Modern Vintage Gamer recounts the anti-piracy measures Microsoft went to to prevent Xbox 360 hacks such as stealth media checks, Xbox Live bans, and even encrypted firmware. So, if you guys don't remember, we used to burn out those discs 
There were stealth media checks. Remember ABGX? Y'all remember ABGX? Making sure to have your games patched right. If you didn't have your games patched right, you might be banned. You remember that? Okay, there were stealth media checks that ABGX was helping us out with. So that was cool. Uh, Xbox Live bans. There was over, I mean, how many? I think a million Xbox 360s banned around Modern Warfare 2 release. That's because everybody was running custom firmware on their damn DVD drives because they didn't have this protection that they had at this point back before, okay? So, and they also, you know, I can go on and on about the encrypted firmware and all that, but nonetheless, what was needed to make this like the dumbest damn hack ever was the drill. Like I did a lot of different mods in my life from all the way from, I mean, if you want to count Game Genies and all that, but PlayStation 1, I had Golden Fingers, PlayStation 2, the Xbox, so on and so on and so on. A lot of different mods, Team Executor mod chips on multiple systems. Um, you know, a lot of different vulnerabilities, man. A lot of different hacks. Ain't none of them. I never had to use no damn drill. Who uses a drill for a mod? But my dumb ass did it not once, but thank you. You can go ahead and finish that. So uh, hackers actually were using this as an actual exploit. They're like, yo, if you want to get into that drive, you better do the kamikaze hack. It'll get you right in there. Kamikaze hack? What the hell are you talking about? So... Let's go down even further. What makes the Kamikaze hack so interesting is the extent hackers went to circumvent the console security. When Microsoft released a new slimmer Xbox 360, the company replaced the flash chip and instead combined it with the digital signal processor chip to make a single MediaTek chip package that could not be easily flashed with custom firmware. This made it harder for hackers to isolate the flash chip and hack the console. Microsoft also went up a step further and encased the chip in a resin for good measure. To open up this drive for flashing so that the console would run custom firmware, people needed to drill a hole in a chip to disable protection. How dumb does that sound? I mean, it is the dumbest damn thing anybody could ever think of. It's dumb, but I did it not once, but twice. Microsoft thought this would be enough to stop hackers dead in their tracks, and it was not. That was said by Modern Ventures Gamer. After removing the chip's cap and seeing what's inside, hackers learned that two lines going into the chip were the right protection and ground lines. By drilling through the trip, the lines would be destroyed and therefore unable to prevent the console from running burned disk. However, accidentally destroying any other lines in the chip could ruin your console's DVD drive. Look at all those lines. Now, I know people are looking at this and they're like, yo, Nick, that's a, that's, I can I hit that with anything. Give me that drill. Vroom! Vroom! You fucked up your drive, man. It's done. It's done, man. If you went, you're done. It shouldn't even be like that. Like, you're done. You you done messed up all them dry, all them wires and all that. You done messed it all up, okay? So essentially, you have one chance. And if you screw it up, you've hosed your drive. That is from Modern Vintage Gamer. I respect the man, okay? I see my man do a lot. He's telling you, you have one chance. Because if you screwed it up, you broke your drive. All right, the first hackers had to measure with rules and pencil lines on the chip to know where to drill. Guys appeared and tools were inevitably created to help simplify the process and reduce risk. These were kamikaze kits that would tell users if they had drilled too far, destroying the drive. Now I can tell you, um, way too far, many people have, <laughs> have done that. Like you think you're drilling a little bit, but you don't understand how deep you have to go. It's not real deep, okay? So a lot of people ruined it. If I had to say a failure rate, I would say 80%. Definitely, not even close. It could be more. Most people were trying this were not professionals, which means they were not using actual tools they should have been using, and they were probably using regular drills or you know whatever they could find around the house to make these holes, including myself who did it not once, but twice, all right? So, once the security measure was drilled out, hackers could flash the drive with custom firmware and play bootleg copies of games. So, where does that come in for you, Nick? So, my dumbass went ahead and used a kitchen knife. And remind you, I've already modded many, many different drives at this point, okay? I've modded the, the Hitachi drive with the, the, what is it, audio disc, the 79 audio disc, whatever that is, or Hitachi 79, something like that. So, you had to use the audio disc. 
did that, put it in mode B, all that. Bam, got that. Uh, Samsung drive, easy, read, write. You know, you had the BenQ drives, great. You had the light on drives for the fat ones where you had the probe or you had to cut a trace, jump a wire. Great, I did all that. The Slims made it a little bit more difficult. So I had someone have a Slim drive and they said, yo, I want my system modded like yours, dog. I said, I got you, man, that ain't nothing. I do that all the time. That's nothing. So I went ahead. I took my time. I took this man's system. And with each bead of sweat coming down, I took that knife and I put it right. And just so you know, the point that it shows right here, okay, is actually right below the K or I like in the corner of the K, bottom right. So I literally took a point of a knife and started turning my knife right there. It took a while, okay? I kept turning, turning, turning till the hole got bigger, 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 bigger. And all of a sudden, I seen a little spark. I said, oh, damn it. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> but to find out, I connected to the drive to Jungle Flasher through my PC, and it was unlocked. I did it. I did it. First try, very simple, bam. I was able to put firm custom firmware on there, gave it back to him, said, yo, thank you. I got my bread. He was able to play backups of games. I also had the games. You know, I, and I'm, I'm out there. Hey, I got the games, three for 25, man. You know, I was out there doing it. That was a time where modding was just, it was a fabulous time for modding. All my old school gamers know what I'm talking about. It was a fabulous time for modding. Nonetheless, so another guy comes, say, yo, I got another one you want to do. I said, man, bring that on. Bring that on. You know what I do to that? That's it. Whoop that ass. Bring it my way. So he brings it. So I do the same thing. I say, yo, I'm not doing it any other way. I'm getting a knife. Put it right there. Start turning. Right? So I'm turning. I'm turning. I'm turning. I'm turning. I don't get no spark or nothing. So I'm like, okay, let me connect the drive and make sure it still works. Connect the drive and still work. All right, cool. Maybe I ain't go deep enough. Turning, 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 turning. And nothing happened. I connect the drive, no response. What the, what the hell am I doing? My sounds ain't working now. Oh, hell no, we gotta get my sounds back working. I cannot be pressing my sounds and my sounds don't work. That pisses me off, okay? Nonetheless, I blew the drive. And that was, whoa, pause, pause. Do not, let's rewind that. I don't like blew the drive, that, that's very pause worthy. Let's say I broke the drive. I screwed it up. I shit it on it. There you go. So the drive no longer works. So how do I help this guy out? Good thing I did have an X, I think it was an X360 USB. I was able to read the firmware for the drive. I had to purchase a blank drive and actually use the same money the guy paid me to get the drive. I put it in there and wrote the firmware to this blank drive and you have the ability to lock it. Once you lock it, you're in the same boat. I made sure everything worked first. Then I locked the drive, he was good to go. But without that, I almost cost this man a system. Um, I mean, I could have went ahead and did a reset glitch hack and then he could have been downloading to the hard drive, stuff like that. But no, nah, at this time I wasn't on it. I was just doing DVD drive. So it was like the biggest sweat moment of my life. And ever since then, I said, yo, I will never do this hack again. That is the dumbest damn thing ever. So whoever brought a Xbox 360 Slim to me afterwards, I said, yo, have you heard of a reset glitch hack? We could try that. And I started doing that. And that's when I became more fond of soldering. I got real good at it then. Um, but without that, it would have been terrible. Imagine how many people would have not been able to do anything if there wasn't a reset glitch hack to be able to get that uh, DVD key. You know what I mean? Because the DVD key and the CPU key are married. They're married together. DVD drive and a motherboard were married. You can't even do your own damn repairs, Microsoft. Don't do that again, okay? Uh, but nonetheless, I just wanted to go ahead and tell y'all that story, man. It was crazy. I did go ahead and break the second drive. Was able to get it fixed. But for all those who are out there modding, just know that we are at a better times. Nintendo Switch, a lot of it is very, very simple. Um, if you have a version one, you got a dongle. Version two, you're going to be doing some micro soldering. So you could send it off. But someone could do that for you. And it doesn't involve any nasty work where it's very risky. So just make sure whoever you have doing work on your systems is a professional. Because if they not believe me, they will fuck your shit up like 
like I did back in the day before I got my skills up. But anyway, it's your boy Nick Motors 05. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Mo fam, we out.